Future Library is an artwork that's going to unfold over a hundred years. We're in the forest because we're cutting down the trees to clear a space uh, to grow Future Library. In a month or so we'll be planting right here in the forest about a thousand trees. And when the trees are fully grown, we're going to cut them down and print a book which is written now but never read until a hundred years. We're inviting one writer a year over the hundred years to write a piece uh, which could be anything, fiction, non-fiction, poetry, from one word to any length of words. And that will be held in a special place inside of the new library in Oslo. And then in a hundred years time it will be uh, made public and printed. So nobody will read any of these texts until far in the future. And not the next generation, maybe the next generation after that. Hello, my name is Martina and I'm absolutely delighted to have the artist Katie Patterson and the curator Anne Beate Hovind here with me today and I'm really looking forward to this conversation about their project, The Future Library. And I'll jump right in and I uh, would like to ask Katie to tell us a little bit about how you came about with the idea of The Future Library. When I came up with the idea for Future Library, this was many years ago, we're already in year seven or eight, but it seemed so simple. Um, it was a fleeting thought I was drawing, I was drawing on a train and I was drawing tree rings. And I had a very immediate kind of vision of tree rings becoming chapters in a book and a story uh, growing through a tree and every ring in the tree becoming a voice and becoming words. So Future Library came about as this kind of simple idea and, it, and like a tree, it's kind of grown and it's grown and grown. But it was really to do with the material connection between trees, words, people, time. And I saw the whole forest growing um, over a hundred years um, and being cut down and pulped and for this book to be printed on it and for it to be read, but not until the whole century had passed. So I saw all of this in a kind of split second, the forest, the words, the, the idea of the book. Um, but then it took many years, you know, to bring it into fruition and it became more complex. Um, and then it turned into the idea where it was more than one voice. It was one author every year who got invited uh, to write a new story, a new piece of text that would grow through the trees um, and all of these voices would come together and become a book in the century time uh, printed on the forest. And so, so I had that idea um, on a train many years ago, um, put it away, it was in my notebook, I put it away because I thought nobody's going to take this seriously. Um, and then there was a chance to come to Oslo and there was a chance to propose the idea um, to Anna Beata Hovind. Great, great. And Anna Beata, may I ask you, how was it? Do you remember the moment you met Katie um, or she gave her presentation? Or Can you describe the moment and what made you immediately connect with the idea of the project or with, with Katie as an artist being able to work with her? Yeah, she, uh, she was invited to come to Oslo and we had four days of discussions with lots of artists, actually, on how can we implement and work with art in this uh, uh, sea, urban seafront development. And uh, Katie was there, she didn't mention the idea at all. And she did a talk, but of course I was so amazed by her art and how she's working. And she left for Berlin. She lived in Berlin at that time. And then uh, I think after a week, she phoned me and she said, uh, and asked me, do you have access to a cabin in a forest? So I took her to my family cabin and dropped her off really, really in the deep forest for a week. And when she came out, she kind of, it sounds like she came out of that forest. <laughs> But it was it's almost it like, like that. Yeah, it was. <laughs> By the end of the week, I'd become a forest person. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and uh, she proposed the idea. Uh, of course, I remember because I, at first, I totally panicked. Because, you know, Katie has the ideas. But it was my job then to make it happen. 
and uh, and I was like trying to imagine hundred years. I, no, I just leave that totally because that's impossible. Okay, growing a forest in the urban seafront area, it's not that is that's so costly to ask for that plot. So I had no idea. But you know, working on the idea because it was so fascinating, but it felt impossible in the beginning. But I I have kind of um, I guess the energy to just start solving it. So and put brick on brick, and then I started with the forest. So when the forester, the main this municipality, say yes, you can have a forest. That's when he said yes. I remember that moment. I knew it was going to happen. That brings us wonderfully to the theme of our Kultur Symposium Weimar, um, with this year's theme of generations. And I think in in your work, it really brilliantly comes out that moment that um, came across the term cathedral, thinking that actually the um, the artist or the producers or the authors of that work won't see the final result um, in, in their lifetime, apart from perhaps the very last generation that will contribute to it's the project. So, um, Katie, may, may I address you again if you what what your response would be there or what what do you feel like when thinking about we're very much in the present and we're a few years into your project and so far probably most of the people that have contributed so far to the project are, are still around are talking about the project um, get a yeah, conversations going and uh, how will that relate to yeah, looking back and looking forward into the future. I think what's so remarkable for me is that in, in this relatively short time since the project started, um, you know, so much has happened in, term of, in terms of the climate, especially. Um, and when we begun, most of the questions that people were interested in asking about then um, were to do with the book, the paper, the materiality, the technology of, you know, do you think books will still be there? Because it was all thinking about electronic books and so on. To suddenly being about, will the human race be there to read the book? And that's extremely shocking and very existential. And, you know, because these are questions that are, are being asked really seriously because it's the position that this generation and all of us living now are in we're actually having to consider our implications now and yeah, the kind of earth that we're responsible for and the people that we're responsible for. And so Future Library always had this inherent ecology in it. It was always to do with trees and time and material and words and all of this kind of interacting and coming together. And I think I often ask what, why, why does it resonate with people all over the world? across nations, ethnicity, religion, whatever, you know, it's it really resonates with a very basic human thing, you know? And I think it's, it is really about this very basic thing. It's about trust. It's about trusting the, this generation that they actually take care and, and also trusting the coming generation that they will take this job on. I think that has so much magic and is very accessible as well to generations and within a generation to the different groups and in this very moment um and time what what do you take away from the project what does it give you right now where you feel this is something you'd like to share with other people um with with the people around you with the people who might not have heard about the project but where you feel this is what you what you personally take away from the project right now in this moment uh, in time that we are in now it's the core of the hope and the trust um, and the interconnection between time and between people 100 years and so far you know it's actually very close and you know we're in this very vulnerable moment in time where the actions of all of us living right now have enormous implications for all of those who are going to be born. Um, so the whole project is a kind of faith that's kind of leaping forward in time. You know, it's a small act, it's a book, you know, we're not kind of, it's, it's, it's still, it's a small gesture, 
but yet it's kind of pointing towards a way of respecting those that are still to come, having a place in our lives um, for people that aren't born yet and having a respect and, you know, an understanding that they are inheriting the world that we are now creating um, and to kind of form that bond, form that, even though it's unseen, kind of form that invisible connection between us and, and the future um, and to be hopeful and to have trust. And for me, that's always what I come away with, you know, in the, in the deepest way. Yeah, and I, I think it's, um, it's about, of course, the same thing. Um, uh, but people ask me very often, aren't you sorry you're not going to read the book <laughs> or the manuscripts? And honestly, for me, the beauty is in this process. It's in being part of this ritual every year. And it's so uh, to connect to time and place like that every year in, and this slowness Great, thank you so much. I think it, it leaves us all very excited about the project. I hope many of us can take part in the project visit or become part of that ritual. Even reading about the project or watching the video is um, very inspirational. Yeah.